In a world where the bizarre is normal and magic and science clash, only Nathan Brazil and his companions, a sexy centaur, a Batman, a mermaid, and a tree can stop two smarty pants nerds, one a murderer, and one a human calculator from achieving the power of the gods in this race against time to prevent the destruction of all existence as we know it. Welcome to the experience that is Jack Chalker's Midnight at the Well of Souls. Who is Nathan Brazil, and what was he doing on the well world? Entered by a thousand unsuspected gateways built by a race lost in the clouds of time, the planet its dwellers called the well world turned beings of every kind into something else. Let's talk about Jack Chalker's Midnight at the Well of Souls. This is one of the books that gets mentioned in Barlow's Guide to Extraterrestrials. Uh, the Sazil is the alien of choice from this book. This is the first book by Chalker I've ever read, um, and I enjoyed it. It's kind of typical in some ways of science fiction of its era. The concept of um, a, a sort of alien superstructure that has unusual characteristics, usually sort of like a, uh, um, like a kitchen sink type approach to what's in the book is, you know, it also is kind of common with that. I'm thinking of uh, like Philip Jose Farmer's um, River World or Larry Niven's Ring World. It's sort of similar. It's a lot more diverse than those books, a lot crazier and zanier. Um, and that's really the book's appeal. I mean, the star of the show in this book is the well world. Not really the characters. The plot is not bad. But the plot, I think, really kind of serves the purpose of showing us the well world. So what is the well world? planet that's segmented into all these hexes. Um, each hex is sort of like its own biome uh, where a intelligent form of life of some variety has the climate and atmosphere that it needs to exist. Um, it's governed by itself. It's not uh, subservient to another hex. The, the book starts off with a character, Nathan Brazil, a ship's captain for a trading vessel in space. And he has some passengers. They investigate a emergency call and get transported to this well world. When you get transported there, you have to go through a well gate. And if you go through a well gate, you are randomly selected by the Malkovian supercomputer to be reincarnated, in a sense, in the form of some other type of life. There's thousands of um, hexes on the well world and each hex has a different type of sentient life on it that has its own atmosphere and form of governance and way of approaching things um, some of them are compatible with others some are not usually um, the more aggressive or nasty ones are sort of situated in such a way that they don't really ever invade one another you know a aggressive water-based type life will be next to a desert hex so once you get to this well world you get pushed through the well gate or you're told to go through the well gate and you do and you be you become something else one of the characters becomes a plant-like creature the sazil that's the one from barlow's guide somebody else becomes a giant wasp another character becomes um half cent well not half centaur it becomes a centaur i was gonna say half centaur but that doesn't make any sense it's full centaur i guess uh, they will go full centaur in this book um it's probably a lot of the appeal of this book or a lot where it really kind of keeps you going is this sort of bizarre discovery that these characters have when they get re you know kind of reform in these strange bodies 
Um, and that sort of like description of a character waking up in this new body and trying to figure out how it works and figure out how to communicate and figure out what the society is supposed to happen when someone say. takes a new form in the world world they're sort of like um mentally programmed to be cool with it you know it's like this is how you've always been so you're okay with it that's not really so much what i'm talking about i'm talking more about how the tone of writing about these things is not one that is pessimistic it's it's not being used in a way to uh, sort of make a statement about homosexuality or um, or like gender in as far as gender equality you know it's a sort of where you would think of science fiction of the 70s maybe wouldn't have been this progressive in its thought um, I was kind of surprised it was kind of a I would almost say almost a positive spin on, you know, choose these characters sort of choosing their gender. In fact, one character does choose to be of a different gender. And I thought that was pretty interesting. It's not something I think that you would see a whole lot of in books at that time. So the plot itself is sort of a romp through the different hexes, exploring, trying to get to the... Um, make this mad race towards the power that everyone wants you know um i don't think it would take too much in fact i would say within the first mm, 10 pages in the book you already are going to know what that power is and that's it's sort of a godlike power to do whatever you want or to anything that you can think of you can do i mean that's right there in the first chapter not a real heavy hard science fiction story um, I think the science there is more of like a speculative type, sort of like, well, isn't this so interesting? What if there was a society of aliens that thought this way or that way? There's some pretty zany stuff that happens, I would say. Um, pretty exotic. Um, there's a, uh, a romantic scene of that particularly comes to mind that was pretty bizarre probably the one point in the book when i was reading and i thought oh really is that what's gonna happen okay this is how we're this is how this is gonna go it was uh it was interesting uh a little humorous to talk about uh, i don't really want to spoil it but we'll just uh i'll let you discover that on your own and uh you can enjoy that later I thought that I never introduced the book. I just said I want to talk about this. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about Jack Talker's Midnight at the Well of Souls. This is one of the 50... No. <clears throat> now we do a little off the cuffing and then we uh, talk about the book. Well, if you made it this far, thanks. This whole thing is a little harder than it seems, but uh, at least I'm having fun doing it. I appreciate you wasting your time with me.